Welcome again to First Minister's Questions Review from Three Men and a Blog. This week we're down to the hardcore team, Phil Attridge, Laurie Stewart and myself, Stuart Lockhead. And Alex Grant will join us again next week. I forget. He has an important appointment with Yes Scotland office today, I believe. So. And it's an important day for that. Probably something to do with the announcement of the date. The date, probably. Um, so, today, overall impression of uh, First Minister's questions, Phil, what did you think? Um, yeah, I thought it was very good today. Um, just if you're looking at overall, no individual as such, I uh, thought it was quite good, quite a bit of information. Good bit of cut and thrust from both sides. Um, the odd wipeout, but on the whole, from the two main protagonists, I thought it was, yeah, I thought Salmon was in top four. Joanne was doing not too bad as well, even though I was hard put to find a question in there. Um, and Ruth Davis, oh, what would you expect? Um, yes, and, but what I did like was Patrick Harvey was in there, and yeah. I thought he was, for the short little interlude he got, I thought it was... He's only got one question. Yeah, Didn't quite right. Um, I, 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 I totally agree with uh, Harvey, but Salmon does have a habit, I mean, even though, you know, he's fourth rate, he does have a habit of, um, I'm right, you know, I'm right, it does get... <laughs> well, you don't want apologies from him. Of course leader. not. Too not. Often, he wouldn't otherwise. be a leader if he was apologised all the time. Exactly. He'd have to, sort of have to resign. On the whole, quite good. First minutes. Morning. Yeah, aye, right, quite good. Um, I'm kind of getting a bit tired. You do switch off with Joanna. Mm. She just rambles on. Now, how, how could she dare say you didn't answer my question? Well, when she just gives out a list of things. Yeah, she, what has, is a the question? she has a negative rant. No question she at all. She makes a speech. You know, and as, as I often say, Alex, I like Alex doing the one word thing, and I would love to see him get up and say, excuse me, what was the question, and sit down again. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, it should be the presiding officer to ask to get to the point. Yeah. Irrespect I mean, at the end of the day, uh, she might be the leader of the biggest opposition, but she's just another MSP. She's not in the government. Um, she's getting to ask a question. So ask a question. Um, sorry, the presiding officer. Are you certain she, she's the leader of the party in Scotland? I thought, I mean, are we still not back in Melbourne, really? And Anna Sarwar. Really no, Sarwar's the deputy leader. Officially, well, yeah. yes. Right. Yeah. But really, was it the Herald that printed the, the headline that called him, calling him the leader? No, I thought, um, yeah, again, but if she was more concise. She's getting there, she was very sarcastic, and it worked quite well. A wee bit about, you know, I'll shut up till uh, you're quiet and I don't know what time the bell goes. Aye, she brought in her experience as a school teacher. You know, and that's exactly what she looked like. I'm not mm. quite sure that's exactly what she wants to look like, but that's what she looks Actually, like. I don't. And I'm back to her, we, you know. We've had a few school teachers. We've had Ian Gray, we've had uh, Jack McConnell. Well, see, there's all the more reason not to have any more. I don't want to score teachers, my Prime Minister, First Minister, well, Prime Minister, First Minister, it's the same difference, isn't it? You don't prime want to score first, teacher. First is Prime. Um, but also, I, I did think it was rather insulting when the people of Scotland Her are actually going to get a chance to, if they want to, which, with the polls, to tell Salmon to stuff his independence, um, and she gives it a sarcastic, historic day. Well, thank you, people. Pause Scotland. for Scotland. Was, uh, Hi, was highly momentous. Right. You print that in the paper, and it's just going to look like she was being serious. You need to hear that, because it was delivered with 100% maximum sarcasm. The pause for Scotland. Well, actually, delivered like a true well, and utter... On a hugely, hugely momentous day for Scotland... She was just poo-pooing it. Delivered like a colonising unionist, without a doubt. I think well, yeah, that's a fair, fair, fair enough point. I must admit, um, I wasn't... I don't think Salmon was in top form today. His mind was probably elsewhere. He's an awful lot on his mind. The reaction not as good to, as last week, no. The, re the reaction to the budget, um, his genuine anger at the deceit over the so-called increase in money to come into Scotland as a result of the budget, but quickly turned out to be cuts. And, of course, goodness knows what he's going to pull out of the bag at 2 o'clock this afternoon in the announcement. Well, I tell you, the Liberals uh, really cocked that up because they didn't understand what was on the table. They did not understand. I mean, it's loans. Well, the budgets. It's loans, okay. over which the Scottish Government... The Scottish Government can't choose to put them into the equity system that they already have. It has to go on the Westminster system. It's designed that way. 
So in effect, what the budget did was take powers away from the Scottish Parliament if they wanted to use the money. Then they whacked them with a £50 million cut in a budget that's already been balanced. Well, that, that's the real time cash, you know, 13, they say, which means 13, they've got 14. to take money back from departments. Exactly. So, you know, and the Labour Party should have been up stamping their feet about it. They should have been ripping the Tories. But they're not abstaining. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you what I thought was actually the most, what I thought was the best um, point came in there from John Mason about the OBR, you know, Osborne's mm. little baby, um, about the fact that this trillion to a trillion and a half, depending on what figures you look at, you know, um, 40 years of oil left is worth nothing. It's totally and utterly useless to man the beast. It's, it's a liability. But, but another whole bunch of nuclear weapons. All will based be on the claim, and um, wonderful. Um, all bought and paid for off the Americans, and also the, the Americans get to use them. The Americans also have the final key. Well, yeah, we have, we, it's not our nuclear, it's not us, it's just um, it's a 51st state. Did thing. you know that the Scottish Secretary wasn't at the budget briefing yesterday, which normally he is? Well, that's why he made the cock up in his analysis. Well, I wonder. He was, he's, he's, not, he's looking very pressured at the moment. I'm, I'm beginning to wonder if it, it's, the road. it's dawned on him that he's going to get shafted in this. That I think they're expecting him to toe the party line, i.e. the coalition line. And I think Michael Moore's got a oh, lot of integrity yeah. in that. Well, I, and I, think he's, I think he's beginning to find it difficult. I'd say he's got more integ integrity than his... Uh, than the first secretary of the well, treasury. I, than, I uh, don't. Danny Alexander. Danny Alexander. I don't. Danny Alexander. I mean, just look at him. I mean, he's got Tory oh, stamped right across his face. Did you hear him on Newsnight last night? He's more. He's more Tory than the Tories. Oh, do you, oh well, I'll tell you what. He's exactly the man you need to put in front of a TV camera because you switch off. Yeah. You totally switch off. He's so monotone. <laughs> yeah. He's mobile monotone. Yeah. All right, then, gentlemen. Try and let's go back to our MQs because we have, do have another. Uh, ah, sorry, you can't have. We're, 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 we're having another chance candy. to rant uh, uh, yeah. a little later. Yeah. Um, I'm try still trying to think about Ruth because Ruth, she came up. Every week we wonder what the Tories can say. Some weeks they just echo what Labour's done. This week she said, well, she got stuck into what she thought was some good stuff about. Oh, we've produced a budget that is good for Scotland, because it's well, a Tory es budget. Essentially what the budget has done is given Scotland permission to borrow money. That's all it's done. You can borrow money, give to people that they're going to have to pay back down the line. It's not new money, it's not money for infrastructure. What about it's this money? Is this, is this, I mean I seem to see a cri saw a criticism yesterday about this scheme, I believe it was about this scheme, which described it as you can borrow is it low interest or free of interest, £120,000? No, pounds? Essentially what they're saying is got you can borrow 20%. Yeah, right. It's you want to buy a house. The, it's the size of the yeah. deposits and people can't get on, so the government's getting in basically. It seems like it's a lend you a deposit. If you want to buy a house, the right. banks are looking for 25% deposit. Yeah. Oh, right. If you can find 5%, the government will guarantee the other 20%. Oh, right. So the people who gain most is the people who are buying houses over half a million. Well, essentially, you're back to 95% mortgages, which led to a house boom. Yeah. So what you've got is Gideon turning around and saying, what we need to get us in the shit is another house boom. Which is what caused the whole thing, I mean, the housing boom, or the... Or the, the and the problems with the bedroom taxes, all to do with the London housing boom. Well, the boom. whole thing in America, where, where it started off with the, with, with, with the subprime mortgages, which was racing, you know, where people paid a fortune for trailers, lending you 125% of the cost of something that wasn't worth 50%, um, but with the boom the real, pushing well, the prices up the, here. The real trick... It's just ludicrous. The real trick... It's another bubble. The real trick that he played was, he then went, right, I'm going to give you 250 million for this, for basically, you can borrow 250 million. Yeah. You can allow the population to borrow 250 million to buy new houses. There's also part of the scheme is to buy any house up to a given amount. But it's about new houses, it's about getting the building trade going. But that's not money that the government can use for it. They can't put in the health service, they can't well, build roads with they it. Can't do, they can't build you social know, housing either. It's specifically for new housing. It's back to the old for the private sector yeah. and 
after John Swinney has balanced the budget for this year, after they've made all the decisions for this yep. year, they've pulled 50 million out of that budget. And 40 million from the following year, apparently. Yep. So in effect, John Swinney's balanced budget has just been kicked in the touch, which was the problem that lots of SNP MSPs have been shouting about. At some point, Westminster can control the Scottish budget, even the devolved budget, mm. because they're the ones that give them the pocket money. And as the national health gets less spent on down south, so the Barnet consequentials will kick in and less money will come north. So you're going to be forced to follow Westminster policy. Mm. And you'll also get the unionist parties, all of them, will start screaming and start blaming Salmon's government for this causing. Um, they'll be lying by omission. They won't be telling you the whole truth. Well, let's try and go, to go for some performances individually. Ruth's performance. Phil. I'm sorry, I'm back. I'm back to it. She had a she had an off day last week. She sort of kind of acted sensibly. Today she was just back to the normal Tory event. She was lying, so um, I'll give her zero. Oh, you're not giving points. I won't give her a point then. But I'd, I'd give her a zero. Might as well go for the points now. Well, Willie, thank God, wasn't there. Um, well, he was there, but he wasn't allowed to speak. Even when he's speaking, he's not. Did you notice he was sat amongst uh, the Tories? Well, he would be, it wouldn't like he? It looked like it. It wasn't, but it looked like oh, it. Looked well, like he it would be. Um, Joanne, um, yeah, I mean, I just wish she'd get a question, but I thought she was quite effective this week, so, yeah, I'll give her, I'll give Joanne a seven. I think she was prepared, yeah. she was, eh? Salmon, I wasn't, he wasn't as good as last week. He's still good. I mean, he still had a bit of passion this week. So I remember I gave him nine, nine and a half, so I'll give him eight and a half this week. Mm. Um, be an awkward bugger. Oh yeah, of course, I like that half. And the presiding the officer? The presiding officer was appalling again. I'll I thought it was far too much desperate. Oh, no, she just doesn't do it, and, and she really needs to pull up Joanne. To, so Joanne could get in another question, or, 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 or just get a proper question rather than a rant. It's boring, you just find yourself dozing off. So I'll give her, I'll give her a three. Patrick Harvey, who I thought was quite good, sat, stood up, just shot from the hip, and got um, it, and got it good. Yeah. Um, and you know, yeah, I'll give Patrick an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Nori, what did you think? Joanne, I thought she did. I thought she did well. Um, I'm beginning to wonder if she watches this because she stopped wearing that floral jacket. No. She's changed her ways quite well. Now what she needs to do is get succinct with a question because the question gets lost in the speech she gives. She wants to learn a bloody script to stop looking down no, at the desk. I'm, I'm only going to give her six, although her delivery was quite interesting because she was quite sarcastic. I thought she was quite However, confident. It's the lowest form of wit. Well, as we said earlier, the comment about the date um, the momentous historical day for the referendum today was delivered with nail-biting sarcasm. And I'll tell you something, that will come back to haunt her. Okay, you said so at the time, I think. That, that will be cast up. I didn't, I, I can make Expect to see that tweeted on mm. YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, from YouTube. Um, who have we missed? Alex, um, sorry, Patrick Harvey. Good, yeah, boom. As you say, show from the hip. Come up, boom, oh, that was a straight in I'm passion the whole lot. I would like to know whether he's going to get a regular question for his group. Um, I think that would be a good thing. That is long overdue. Because it, well, the good, from from point of view as a yes supporter, it shows that you don't have to be SNP to support yes, because he will hunt Alex and he'll ask questions. Oh, oh. he's come from the left. Ruth, Ruth, okay, she's a liar. She's getting nothing. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's simple. And I mean, our delivery is getting worse. Presiding officer, oh. you're right. She she needs to slap them down because it's it's they're beginning to look like Westminster, and I don't like that. I don't, it's so simple. Don't bang your desks. Well, what but she needs to do now. is every time and the Joanne thing. Every time Joanne rambles on, she should tell her to get to the question. But if you notice, the SNP don't bang. Question. See, they're, just, they're polite, because they're really disciplined, actually. They really are disciplined. So I'm only going to give her two, because she had the chance. She had plenty of chances yeah. to slam it. Yeah, you have to discipline the And mind you, Swinney needs told to shut up. No, he does. He's when a bit the camera's angry. on his mouth. Oh, he never stops, eh? Alex, 
I think he took a wee while to get into his stride. He, he's obviously finding it quite frustrating with these rambling questions. It might be why Joanne does it. But I, I would go for the last thing she says if I was him. I would just go, do 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 do, sit down. And when she gets up and says, you didn't ask the question, the only thing well, is, which question did you yeah, want me to answer? Bear in mind that the, the, the first question, well, the first point she makes in her question, he's got more time to prepare an answer than the last one. Yeah. So you can see why the temptation is to go for one of the earlier points that she makes. But I would, because every week she's doing this, the first minister didn't answer the question. He, he needs to find a way to cut that down to a three-word answer. So oh. what's, what score are you going to give him? I'm I gave him the eight and a half. Simply I'm only going to give him an eight. No, I, I gave him that extra for the Iraq, for the Trident no, 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 no. And, and all that. I mean, that was really good. That was a wee one right in the ribs. That's true. I'm going to start with the top then. Start with Alex. Um, not as good as last week. I thought he was in really top form last week. I think, in a sense, I think Joanne did out, out played him a little this week, perhaps by this long list of points that she made. It was perhaps longer. Each, each question was... Well, Fell asleep halfway through. It was so long. Um, so I don't think he was in top form. I'll give him an eight. Um, we'll go just to Joanne. Now, Joanne, she seemed to be more confident this week, and I think you're right to some extent. The comfort zone is settled in. She doesn't feel uncomfortable. I sometimes wonder who the who and why the Labour Party line up. Who's behind her when when she's in camera? That Ian Gray, uh, that woman Murray. Ian Gray right behind her. I'm not sure if that, especially when she started talking about um, school teachers. Um, she can't even discipline her own lot, so I don't see why that's a bonus. Uh, I can't I can't give her more than five this week because. It was just run-of-the-mill stuff. Um, Ruth. Hmm. Ruth just brought in a London budget point, which had already been deflated, and the whole... Alex had already punctured that, bu that balloon already by his answers to Joanne about this equity versus capital versus genuine cash cuts. Two. Patrick, he gets a score. He definitely gets... I'll give him a five, just for one very sharp question. And it is a shame that he doesn't get... Him, Margot, and perhaps Gene Urquhart or something. One of the in turn, they should they should get they definitely should get questions. Presiding officer again, I'm very disappointed. As I said, you could simply say stop banging your desks. Um, and hold and I suppose you're right about getting uh, Joanne to get to the point. Miss mm -hmm. Lamont would be. A, I mean, they do that when they're having debates. So yeah. why don't they do it when they're only got 30 minutes in total for first minister's questions? I don't know. Presiding officer, she's getting going down. Two. Is that everybody? That's it, yeah. Well, well what's the score? Ruth's got a two. I gave her, sorry, you gave her two. Phil mm. and I didn't score her at all. I, I don't like people telling lies mm. um, in Parliament, and she did lie. Um, then Joanne, an 18, which, you know, it's not bad for Joanne. She's scoring up about there quite regularly. She dropped, she dropped right down from the other week. Patrick Harvey, 21. He should, he should definitely be allowed like, to speak more. Short, sharp, but to the point. Well, he kind of speaks for me, to be honest. I'm a bit green. Yeah. And Alex, left. Alex, <laughs> 20, 24 and a half. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that half. Awkward bloody bus driver. Um, so he's won again. And if you look over the piece, I'm not sure he did that much better than Joanne, actually. Um, his rambling has a point to it, and he does occasionally, he does that list thing, mm. but it's more effective. But the whole thing, he just does it like that, not like, mm. with the eyeballs going up. If she learned to read her script... Go to some drama classes for a while. Well, apparently, you know, if you can take IQ, there's an IQ or a smart drug you can take, which allows you to learn your lines. Uh, Dame <laughs> Judy Dench is, is, is taking it. She's 78 and she takes them to learn her lines. It's called fish oil capsules. I'm actually starting to think that if she learnt the lines, and mine when she first started, and it was it was all sound bites, aye, wasn't it? Sound bites. I mean, she, th there's got to be. I mean. Well, really, she needs to get a new script writer. Or maybe actually Alex, start as yeah. a leader. Start Alex, writing her own script. Alex needs to get into it because she does get unsettled when he puts the boot in. 
Oh yeah. And he start needs to start putting it down again. Yeah. That's when. However, to somebody's it. obviously taking advice. There is a problem with the presiding officer, as we've mentioned. Um, seven. She should be in double figures every week. She should be hitting the twenties mm. if she's doing her job. So there's a problem there, mm. and it it it's a problem for the SNP because it's important that the Parliament looks better than Westminster. Yeah, well, that's true. Did that you see the Deputy Big problem. John yesterday down in Westminster? Uh, now yeah. that yeah. sees like yo -yo. she needs to take a few lessons. I watched that. I thought it was yeah. very, very good. Yeah. I didn't watch much of it. Made them sarcastic, told them to go and act like that at a local football match. I mean, it was... Yeah, yeah if she can't do it, at least... I liked his, what was yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, if we were auditioning for pantomimes, I, I wish you'd take it outside the Parliament. Yeah. <laughs> well, gentlemen, short and sharp this week, because we're going to have a go at uh, recording something else in a minute. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Mm. And thank you for watching or listening. Goodbye. <laughs>